Sick. Je fais ça et je reste. Tu vas rouler euh, sur le côté. Je fais ça. Voilà. method of training the body and mind uh, in order to overcome obstacles. That's the very basic definition. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of practicing movement also with a certain mentality, uh, which is a lot uh, related to basic quality of movement, exploring your environment, facing your fears on a regular basis, grow through obstacles um, and, and, and basically challenge yourself, face your fear and then grow through that. So every time there's an obstacle in your life coming to you, you've got this habit of, of facing it and, and, and dealing with your fear. We see parkour being applicable to your everyday life. I've been practicing parkour for about 17 years now. I started in 1998 in France, where it was still a very, very uh, early stage of the creation of parkour. Um, I've been lucky enough to start to get the right place at the right time, starting with the, the founder of the discipline. Most of the people are scared when they arrive to the class, thinking, oh my God, the people are sending us messages. Oh, what is the requirement? How fit I have to be? Is it dangerous? Things like that. Until they come and they say, wow, it's really, actually it's very easy, it's accessible, it's very nice. Most of the, the training of parkour athletes is based on 60% of conditioning, 60 to 80% of conditioning. Make strong body, allow you to be stronger when you do those big jumps, to absorb all this impact that we are doing, that we are receiving while moving. And also mainly developing coordination, agility, um, flexibility, speed, power, all these fitness components are very important. And we train all of those in only one training. And even though here at the park, just having people climbing into a, a fence or just into a wall, it's already challenging for many people. So we, we like to include one of these little challenges at the end of each class so people can experience it, realize that it's managed risk. Chris and I have been living in Thailand for a few years, so we used to train the heat. Uh, we know it's not uh, always easy. Uh, and, and the heat in Dubai is, at, at this time of the year is obviously very, very uh, hot. Again, the whole essence of parkour is, is, is being challenged all the time. How do you deal with obstacles? And heat is just another one, basically. So, um, you know, there's a scene where David actually uh, takes me hostage. <laughs> And he had to bust out the ceiling and come down behind me and grab my gun and all that. And he did it for real. No stunt man, uh, two takes only. You know, only two takes only because of the camera needed to get two takes. He didn't need two. He, he didn't <laughs> need two takes. He did it right the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an amazing athlete.
Well, b before, I, before I met Paco, I was a very angry kid when I was 14, 15, 16 years old. I had a lot of energy, a lot of anger in me, and um, I wasn't really channeling that energy in the, in the right direction. So I was quite an unhappy person, uh, and I didn't really know what to do. And I just knew that what, what you offer me now, going to school and uh, following the normal path, wasn't, wasn't inspiring me really. And then I met Parkour and just basically seeing the movement, just, just visually seeing what the human body can do and achieve in a, in a certain space, just really touched my heart, inspired me really. My dream was to be free, uh, not being walking in an office every day. Uh, I wanted to travel a lot, I wanted to be active, I wanted to be self-dependent, not work for any like, companies or, or stuff like that. And, and that's it. It's, that's, I, I had this like, idea in my dream and then when I started parkour I just forgot about those questions, put them aside and I just trained, trained, trained with a lot of passion and it was like people in society looking at us saying you guys are crazy, you're like five, ten guys, really, really crazy, you're going nowhere. But now it's like thousands and thousands of us all over the world being crazy and it makes more sense. Uh, parkour now is practiced all over the world and a lot of people share the same feeling, they share the same um, um, yeah, the same passion for parkour and, and they, they get the same benefit as well. It, it, gave, it gave me more confidence in, in my everyday life. So basically through, uh, with parkour, with training parkour, then uh, with time now I can, I can apply this, this mentality to my everyday life. The fear is my friend now. If any time fear, fear come to me, I say, okay, are oh, you again, hey, here we go. And I, I, deal, I deal with that in a better way. It's much more subtle, it's you and you. No one push you to jump, no one force you to jump. So whatever you mess up in the jump or in your training, it comes down to you. It's your, your choice, your action, and, and, and the consequence come down to you. So it, um, all that basically learning process then makes you stronger, more, more confident, and then you, you can then start to apply that in your everyday life. So now I'm more confident talking to people and more social. Uh, things that I, I, was, I wasn't really comfortable with before. Parkour basically uh, is my job today and I'm traveling all over the world. I'm meeting a lot of cool people. I'm really glad to be part of an awesome community of really nice people. Uh, it's my job. Uh, so I'm, I'm basically achieving pretty much everything I was dreaming uh, about before. But yeah, I guess learning more, more about myself through, through challenges, through parkour, through movement. What can I do, what I can achieve and, and facing all, all that um, issues I had. Well, there's two things. First, I keep training for myself. I, I know now, after 15 years of training, I know the benefits of parkour. And um, I'm going to keep doing that for my body, for my mind. It helps me in many, many ways. So that's from a personal point of view, I'm going to keep doing that. But beyond... Beyond that, uh, what I'm really grateful for now is uh, now look back and say, wow, that's, in 15 years that's what happened and that's basically where I wanted to be. I'm now in Thailand. I always wanted to live in Thailand, always since I'm uh, 13 years old. I came here to Thailand first time and I looked at my mum. First time I went there, I said, mum, I know I want to live here, that's for sure. Guaranteed I'm going to live here. Now parkour brings me something different and it should, it should be bringing something. If you, if you spend the whole life risking your life, uh, maybe just uh, it would be good to, uh, I guess, ask yourself why. I think yeah, I had that time, I enjoyed that time, but now it's just time to move on and think about parkour more as, a, more as an uh, holistic kind of a discipline for me to balance it out. I don't need to prove myself that much thing that I had to do before. I, before I had a lot of things to prove to myself. That's why I was challenging myself, doing a lot of crazy stuff, pushing myself so hard every day. And then I got my answers. Yes, Stefan, you can do this, chill out now. Easy, what's next? What do you want to do next? So, and, that's, and that's what I'm doing now, sharing. Uh, so, yeah, doing a lot of different things, sharing with people and, and help other people who want to try parkour.
on était dans une recherche, je pense. Hein. Même si nous, on ne se connaissait pas encore, on était tous, euh, on était des jeunes, le corps, il a, il a un besoin de bouger. Il y avait des trucs déjà faits, le basket, le foot et tout. Et puis, euh, moi, je me rappelle que Charles, il était déjà un peu dans cette énergie parce qu'il bougeait sans... On était déjà tous dans la forme, mais il n'y avait pas de nom. Et, euh, et moi, il se trouve que mon, mon père, avec les enfants de troupe au Vietnam, sont passés, toute cette chose, une recherche enfin, après, un peu personnelle. J'en suis arrivé à en creusant un peu sur son histoire, à sortir le parcours. Et c'est là que ça, ça a été le déclic dans ma tête. Donc moi, j'ai ramené ça. Et nous, on a bossé avec cette méthode. On a chacun eu nos bases, travaillé nos bases. Après, chacun a travaillé son style, sa philosophie. Ben, moi, j'ai pratiqué beaucoup de sport. Et euh, c'est vrai que je ne me suis pas retrouvé dans les sports euh, traditionnels. Euh, et je lisais, je lisais beaucoup les comics américains, euh, Spider-Man, etc. Et c'était quelque chose qui me parlait beaucoup de ces gens qui étaient, euh, comment dire, humains, mais en même temps avec des pouvoirs, et, euh, mais qui avaient quand même des problèmes. Et, euh, et je me suis dit, mais qu'est-ce que je peux faire de ma vie pour être euh, quelque, quelque chose de plus que mes parents, par exemple Et quand j'ai rencontré David et que je l'ai vu bouger, ça m'a donné tout de suite le déclic. Et je me suis dit, bah, c'est ça. C'était euh, un non-dit, hein, mais c'était une énergie, en fait. Bah, voilà, depuis ce jour-là, j'ai accroché et j'ai pu lâcher. Comment on n'est pas là pour éduquer les jeunes, on n'est pas des professeurs, on n'est pas des maîtres, on n'est pas des sages. On est juste des gens qui ont une expérience dans un domaine. On veut le donner aux gens en leur disant euh, « faites attention quand même ». Et c'est sûr que ça se trouve à une époque où euh, on, est un peu, on, on est arrivé un peu au bout dans la technologie, on a fait plein de trucs, les effets spéciaux et tout, et on ramène quelque chose de brut qui se marie très bien, que ce soit au monde des médias, les jeux vidéo, les films et tout ça, et ça s'adapte parfaitement. Donc du coup, ça, ça a ramené un coup de boost aussi, même dans les jeux vidéo, qui ont qu repris une autre dimension. Et donc on se rend compte qu'il y a eu vraiment... Euh, il y a quelque chose qui s'est passé. Quoi. On a juste la chance d'être euh, à l'origine de ce sport. C'est tout. C'est qu'il y a eu plein d'occasions de le faire avant, ça n'existait pas, ça n'existait pas sur les vidéos. Il n'y avait pas cette forme comme on l'a amené. Donc c'est la seule chose dont on est fier. La performance, elle va évoluer. Il y a déjà des gens qui ont eu des niveaux, mais encore pire que ce qu'on a fait. Mais nous, on était dans la recherche. On était en train d'étudier le terrain, tout ça. Donc maintenant, chacun a trouvé ses marques. Nous, on est, on est spectateurs de tout ça. On a la chance de participer à des choses, c'est bien. Mais déjà, tout ce qui s'est passé nous a largement comblé. Quoi. Dans la vraie vie, voilà, on nous, on nous trace les chemins où passer. Et le parcours, c'est une façon de personnaliser son chemin. Quand on fait un jeu vidéo, comme dans Assassin's Creed, il y a une mission et tout. Mais on peut sortir de cette mission. Des fois, on est là, on a un passage, on est là, mais... Tiens, mais est-ce que je peux sauter de là à là et... et du coup, on s'approprie le décor. Plus que juste participer à un décor où on a une mission à faire, on rentre dans le jeu vidéo et on est vraiment dedans parce que on peut dire, t'as vu dans le jeu, là, sur l'église, à côté de ça, t'as vu sur la gauche, il y a un, un mur, j'ai essayé, j'arrive à l'attraper. Alors que c'est pas ça le but du jeu. Mais on arrive à se détacher et faire deux histoires en même temps. Et donc c'est comme une façon de... Moi ce que j'ai compris c'est, c'est pas que pour toi, laisse-en pour les autres. Ce que toi tu as vu là que tu pourras pas faire, un autre le fera. Et ça va se passer dans tous les pays du monde comme ça. Et tu seras content de voir dans d'autres pays avec des gens qui vont t'amener comme des guides. On est heureux de vivre, c'est ça le parcours. C'est pas un sport de rebelle. C'est des gens qui sont heureux de vivre, c'est des gens qui s'accrochent à la vie. C'est pas des gens euh, suicidaires ou fous. C'est juste ça qu'il faut arriver. Si on était fou d'avoir inventé ce sport, et déjà, on ne l'aurait pas pratiqué aussi longtemps et puis, euh, puis on boiterait tous aujourd'hui qu'on serait cassé en mille morceaux. Je pense que c'est vraiment un, un sport où il faut être à l'écoute de son corps. Et si on est à l'écoute, on saura toujours euh, si on peut, on peut aller un peu plus loin, s'il faut faire attention. Faut... C'est vraiment la mesure euh, à respecter pour aller loin. Before we go out and train, we used to say on va bouger, which means let's move.
When I started parkour, it wasn't something established. It was so broad. It was a lot of uh, hours spending doing things and then trying to observe what are the results, both physically and also mentally. What it is to do thousand jumps on the spot. How long it takes? How do you feel afterwards? How do you feel after 200 and you want to give up and then you still have 800 to go? I chose the, the name Park Origins for the program because I've been practicing for like almost 20 years now and then I've, I've seen the evolution of parkour a lot and then I think that became a little bit diluted, messy. We don't, we don't know what it is, it's, it's a lot of action and again I think the, the, the meaning is, is, is not available really. So my point was to go back to the origins of it. What are the benefits behind such practice? I think parkour it's a great tool to help you to work on your flaws, your fears, and then make you a better version of yourself. Parkour Origins, I wanted to create a, a program that's accessible for everybody, whether the, you, you are an, an advanced parkour practitioner or someone who just, you know, never done parkour before.
David Bell, choreographer, stuntman, and movie star. Known for such movies as Luc Besson's District 13, Babylon AD, and Brick Mansion. Bell is also the founder of Parkour, the art of movement that attracts millions of followers all over the world. He cooperated with the studio behind Dying Light, one of the most anticipated games of 2015. The definition of parkour, I would say it's an art of escape and pursuit. It's also a method of physical training using obstacles as well as of learning how to respond to emergency situations. Behind parkour, there's a philosophy. For me, it was mainly a quest for freedom. It is a kind of active meditation because it forces you to focus, which lets you forget the rest and get away. I like the way parkour is presented in the game. It gives you the impression of being inside, being the character. It's very realistic, the motion, the terrain analysis, the fluidity of movement. There's no downtime. You are caught in this energy that pushes you to look for another obstacle and to keep the next one in your field of vision. Along with young traceurs, we proposed several movements and tried different techniques to give a wider choice to the developers and let them decide what was more adaptable. Parkour is so broad that we had to stay within the direction and the spirit of the game. That is to be consistent with the escape aspect and immediate reaction to overcoming obstacles. The way you play is very enjoyable. This is a style that I could not find in any other game. I have tested many games that use parkour and it's the first time I have found that feeling of freedom, ease, fluidity. Playing Dying Light would be a good approach for those who have never tried parkour. They will immediately feel the comfort, the ease of movement. There is no real risk in playing, so it will make players want to try and imagine what us, traceurs, feel when we're outside on the obstacles. This desire, driven by confidence, makes you go searching for another obstacle, and this is the feeling that you get immediately while playing this game. What struck me most was playing with the Oculus Rift on. It was like being 10 again. I didn't want to stop. It was like an avatar, as if I had lost my body and reappeared in a video game. Especially because I could see my hands. For me it was magical, amazing. You know, the great spirit that he brings, the great energy, the great personality that he brings, you know, the, the idea of a guy who, you know, who, who, you know, who is, has a very heroic spirit about himself, you know what I mean? If you, when he tell you stories about his childhood and how he grew up and the things he'd been through, you hear this heroic skateboarder feeling, you know, mm -hmm. and yet to make success in his business and 
major success and to still be able to be compassionate and to be that good father figure for your family is, uh, is important and he was that kind of man.
today, meeting up with Sebastian, have a little talk. Hello! Hello! Hey, how are you? Hey, hey. Where, where, where can we park the van? I don't know. <laughs> I know you, how are you doing? How are you, my friend? Right, where are we? I have no idea where we are. Oh, Dandalak is just right behind. We came to the Dandalak and uh, met up with Sebastian. Visiting old areas and, and people that I know was really, really good. It's the first time I've ever come across a project where the idea is to get so much filmed within so many cities in a matter of three weeks. It turned out that it required more than just work. Um, it required a lot of heart and soul and just just really connecting with each other and um, working together as, as a family. And I think at the end we've really come together and 
Um, I've learned so much from it, this experience. Oh my god! Yeah, this is amazing. Uh, we're all together in our lives. We're all doing this tour and we're making it happen. And it's one of those special moments. It's been a lot, bro. Good. Sebastian told me that uh, David was about and you know it'd be it'd be cool to meet up with him. How you been man? You good? Ended up uh, seeing David. Um, we went over together and we just we all sat down and just had a little talk and stuff and just you know just in general talking about life and as you do. Everyone's got their own journey and view on life. As long as you're sharing what's on your heart and stuff, you know, then we can all and all grow together, I guess. The world needs people like us. It's the first time I've just chilled with David and just uh, talk, you know, spoken with him. And uh, I, di I didn't really feel like there was much to be said, really, because I feel like I've already known who he is as a person and stuff, and just through the, the expression, through his movements.